In his 1636 Relation, Jean de Brébeuf describes his understanding of the myth of creation among the Wendats. He had been living in Hironia for quite some time, and had become a keen observer of Wendat society and culture. As a Jesuit, he was interested in religion, of course. Brébeuf is careful to note all the intricacies of the Wendat cosmogony, but in his long letter to his superiors in France, he finds himself in a bind. Brébeuf admires many aspects of the Wendat culture, but here, in the religious sphere, he is obviously forced to distance himself from the Aboriginal story. In this video, we will first explore the myth of creation among the Wendat people, the story of Atenzik, also known in contemporary writing as Sky Woman. In her book, Dispersed But Not Destroyed, A History of the 17th Century Wendat People, Wyandot scholar Catherine Magila Bell offers this version of the Huron-Wendat myth of origin. When Atenzik fell from her home in the clouds, the world was only an ocean filled with aquatic animals. When the animals saw Atenzik descending from the sky, they gathered to form a council to discuss how to save her life. The animals then decided to create a landmass on the back of a giant turtle. They sent Toad to the bottom of the ocean to get mud, which he then placed on the back of Turtle. Before Atenzik landed, the animals had managed to create an earthly surface using the mud. To soften the fall, wild geese grabbed Atenzik's limbs and guided her to the new continent, North America. Labelle insists on the significance of the Wendat story of creation. In many ways, the legend of Sky Woman highlights some of the most significant features of early modern Wendat society. It emphasizes the important roles of leaders, Toad, women, Atenzig, and communal systems of power, the council. In his account, Rebeuf relates in surprising details the story of Atenzig, and he recognizes that it is for the Wendats a founding belief similar in importance to the biblical cosmogony. However, through his narrative, Brebeuf interjects phrases like, as they say, or they claim, in an effort to distance himself from the myth. Aren't there many versions of the Wendat story of creation? He also adds, while the Bible holds permanent truths preserved by the printed text. Brebeuf is nagged by a translation issue. In French, the same word is used for sky and heaven, as the word ciel or cieux accounts for both physical and religious meanings. Prébeuf finds it difficult to reconcile the figure of Atenzik and Christian beliefs, if indeed the mythical woman came from heaven, not from the physical sky. Throughout his account, Prébeuf seeks to show that a woman simply cannot fall from the sky. Where was she before she fell, he repeatedly asked the Wenda elders. In the clouds? In unraveling the very mystery of the Wenda story of creation, Prébeuf shows a good deal of intellectual dishonesty. After all, Christian narratives also rested on allegorical meanings. Did he not realize that? We think that he did, in spite of the posture of irony he chooses to adopt in his account. What strikes us today is the amazing intersection between two distinct founding narratives. Brebeuf's careful, multifaceted chapter on Wendat beliefs remains a key to a deeper, richer understanding of the early cultural encounters in the Great Lakes region. Perfect.